Hi everyone, it's Mr. Wyman. I'm getting ready to read The Science Fair, a realistic fiction text. And before I read, I want to tell you a little bit about uh, the text. I had to use a reading strategy when I was first preparing this. I read through it already once um, to myself. And you know what I did? The very first page, um, this page, I what got confused. So I read this section over here, and it's written in third person. Um, it says, Ms. Babbitt's third grade class is having a science fair. Beanie is a girl in that class who doesn't like science. Her partner, Kevin Gates, is good at science. He came up with two experiments to show that he makes liquids and gases expand or get bigger. Beanie is proud of herself for figuring out how to show that solids also expand when they are heated. That's what you need to do in science fairs is like demonstrate or show what you learned from studying a particular scientific topic. But Beanie is worried that their experiment will not get a good grade. Some of the other students are making glittery posters. Others are going to play music. Kevin insists that all they need is good science. How can they compete without fancy props? Well, we'll see. Then on this next page, it says, On the day of the science fair, I woke up early before the alarm went off. I lay in bed, hugging Jingle Bell and worrying. Now, wait a minute. Why is this written in first person? Who's telling the story here? It was third person, and who is this talking? Well, I had to reread this text and even like read on in the in the chapter or in the book to figure out what was going on. It almost feels like this section is just setting up or introducing the character and this situation for you to then um, start hearing the story from Beanie's perspective, um, almost like a play, like and this is the narrator giving you a heads up. The rest of the story um, is written almost like a journal. Beanie is telling her story from her perspective of what happened during the science fair. Um, go ahead and listen as I read out loud and listen for the character development in the text. You really get to know Beanie and she becomes like a friend as we simply experience this text. So, it's the day of the science fair. I woke up early before the alarm went off. What would make somebody do that? Well, I lay in bed hugging Jingle Bell and worrying. Who's Jingle Bell? Jingle Bell is probably this little stuffed animal um, reindeer. And look, this I assume is Beanie. She looks all Brownie faced. What if our project is the worst one there? I said to Jingle Bell. What if I mess up when I do my part for the judges? What if the judges laugh when they walk away from our table? What if Miss Babbitt told us that she liked our project just to be nice? Miss Babbitt would do something like that once I heard my dad tell my mom that Miss Babbitt does a good job of building self esteem. When I asked him what that meant, he said she works hard to make us kids feel good about ourselves. Jingle Bell understood that there was a lot to worry about. On the bus that morning, I saw that Carol Ann and Stacy were dressed alike. Carol Ann and Stacy didn't seem worried. They were talking nonstop about how much fun the science fair was going to be. We're handing out rock candy to everyone who comes to see our project, Carol Ann said. I bet we win first prize. Well, maybe second, said Stacy. The volcano project sounds really great. Nathaniel and Montrell's project was about how volcanoes erupt. They were going to build a volcano out of paper mache and put something inside that would make it get all bubbly like a volcano erupting. Stacy said to me, your project is good too, but I knew she was just doing self-esteem on me. Which is really funny because it's not how you use the term self-esteem. She used self-esteem as though it were a verb um, 
or I suppose it would be a noun. She's doing self-esteem on me. That's not something that you do to someone. Self-esteem is just something that you have um, within yourself. After lunch, we went into the gym. There were three rows of tables with four tables in each row set up at one end of the gym. You have a half hour to set up your projects, Ms. Babbitt said, and have fun, she added. I felt like throwing up. And take a look at this diagram. This is really great. Gases, liquids, and solids get bigger when they're heated up. It is not magic. It is science. And take a look at how the illustrator put this together. Does this look like a fancy sign? Is it well written? Is it neat? No, it's purposefully made to look sloppy or at least a little bit sloppy. And then here are the signs that they had on their science, um, pro their science fair project. Uh, if you look closely though, it's really cool looking. The experiments, heat makes things get bigger and then they demonstrate they demonstrate gases, liquids, and solids, and they show how the molecules um, like react or, or um, are related. Ga the, in gases, the molecules are farther apart. In liquids, the, you know, they have like little waves. So there's like images here to give you an idea. And then solids are opaque. Gas, uh, air, as it gets heated up, and here's a bottle, and then this right here is like a balloon that doesn't have anything in it and then as the heat is applied to the bottle which presumably doesn't have anything in it other than gas the gas moves further apart for the molecules move further 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 apart as it heats up it expands and that causes this balloon to blow up for this one there's a bottle and presumably there's liquid inside the bottle and with heat applied to the liquid this little straw on top shows the liquid go creep up the straw showing that the liquid inside the bottle is getting bigger and bigger it's expanding and then this is the one that Beanie did um, a solid which would be hmm, how does hers work it looks like there's this eye screw on a nail and then it gets heated up. Maybe there's heat at first and when you turn off the heat, it gets smaller so that this nail comes out of the eye screw. That's how it would work. Um, well, let's read on and see. Kevin and I covered our table with a white tablecloth that my mom let us use. It had a big gravy stain in the middle, but she said we could set something on top of the stain so it wouldn't show. We laid out our stuff and a sign. I taped my poster to the front of the table. When we were finished setting up, I walked around the gym to see what the other table teams were doing. When I saw the volcano, I ran back to our table. Kevin, you should see the volcano. It's huge. Why didn't we think of a volcano? Before Kevin could say anything, I ran off to look at other projects. Then went back to report to Kevin. Carol, Ann, and Stacy have streamers all around the edge of their table. Why didn't we think of that? Should I call my mom to ask if, she, if she'll run out and buy us some streamers? She'd do it. I know she would. We don't need streamers, said Kevin. I left our table again, then went back with more news. Manuel and Boomer are doing a planet project and they have a black tablecloth with stars all over it. Why didn't we use a cool tablecloth instead of a dumb white one with gravy stain on it? You need to chill, said Kevin. Forget about what other people are doing and just before, but before Kevin could finish, I ran off again. In a minute, I was back. Linda and Elaine have bubbles, bubbles for their project. Big ones, I said out of breath. Everybody loves bubbles. Why didn't we do bubbles? Beanie, he said, could you go get some paper towels in case the red water comes up to the top of the straw and runs over? 
Then I noticed the crowd of kids around the table next to ours. I peeked over. It was Shalita and Jessica's project. They had a bunch of big balloons on their table and a plate sprinkled with black pepper. Oh no, I said to Kevin. Look at all those balloons. Balloons are even better than bubbles. How come we only have one itsy bitsy one in our project? Remember the balloon at the top of the bottle of gas? Shalita rubbed a balloon on her arm and then held the balloon a few inches above the plate of pepper. The pepper jumped right off the plate into the balloon. What that happens because of static electricity, Shalita explained. Everyone said, wow. One kid even said, that's a winner. My stomach started to hurt. I told Kevin I had to go to Mrs. Uh, Facinelli's office to lie down. Mrs. Facinelli is the school nurse. She has Ranger Rick magazines we can look at while we try to feel better. If I'm not back by the time our turn, it's our turn, go ahead without me, I said. I almost got away, but Kevin grabbed my arm. Paper towels, he said. Parents started to come into the gym and walk from table to table. Teachers from our school brought their classes to see the projects too. When I saw my mom and dad, I waved to them and they came over to wish us luck. Kevin said his mom was going to try to get off work early and come, but even though he kept looking toward the door and looking all around the gym, I don't think he saw her. Then the judges showed up and went from table to table. I started to bite my nails. When they got, when they got to the ballroom, when they got to the balloon table, I knew we were next. My knees got wobbly. As the judges walked to our table, Kevin took one last look toward the gym door. He started waving. She made it, he said. I looked toward the door and saw a woman coming into the gym. She looked out of breath like she'd been running. Mr. Shammer, Shanner said, Hi, Beanie and Kevin. What do we have here? We have a project to show that heat makes things expand or get bigger, Kevin said. Then he poked me with his elbow, and I said, we will now show how heat makes gases expand. Then Kevin did the experiment with the balloon on the bottle and explained everything he was doing as he went along. Next I said, we will now show how heat makes liquids expand. Kevin did the bottle and straw experiment and explained it. We did not need paper towels. The red water didn't come up too high, just high enough. Then it was Kevin's turn to talk. He said, we will now show how heat makes solids expand. This time I did the experiment, the one with the nail and the eye. When we were finished, Mr. Shanner said, hmm. The judges wrote stuff on clipboards and asked us a few questions. They shook our hands and moved on to the next table. Why weren't they smiling when they shook our hands? I asked Kevin. Why didn't they say wow when the water came up the straw? Why did Mr. Shanner say hmm? What were they writing on their clipboards? Kevin sat down and smiled. We did a good job, he said. What do you think is going to happen? While we were waiting for the judges to make their decisions, I went over to Carol Ann and Stacy's table and asked how their presentation went. Well, said Carol Ann, Carol Ann, I think the judges liked our outfits and the necklaces, but they told us to turn off the music so they could hear us better. Plus, we were supposed to start growing the crystals a few days ago, only we forgot to read the instructions on the box. We didn't do it till this morning, so the crystals are kind of small. I looked at the fishbowl of water on the table. It had a string going through the water and the crystals were supposed to be that the crystals were supposed to be growing on the string. But all I could see was a little bit of pink grainy stuff on one part of the string. And Stacy added, Boomer's mom broke a tooth eating our rock candy. How did yours go? Carol Ann asked me. Okay, I guess. The judges came back into the gym. We all went back to our tables. I crossed my fingers. Miss Kowalski Kowalski said, we were very impressed with the efforts of all the students. We hope they are as proud of themselves as we are of them. 
Then Mr. Shanner said, It was hard for us to choose the three best, but after much deliberation, we have chosen for third we have chosen for third place the static electricity experiment. It was creative and educational. Shalita and Jessica screamed. My only hope had been third place. I sighed. I uncrossed my fingers and clapped as they went up to get their cert certificates and third place ribbons. Next, Ms. Kow Kowalski gave the second place award. It went to the volcano project. Nathaniel and Montrell's volcano was impressive, she said, but it was their charts and their explanation of what causes a volcano to erupt that we especially liked. Those were thorough and easy to understand. Listener, do you hear why the judges are picking these winners of the science fair projects? It's not because of streamers, sprinkles, music, candy, or anything else. It's the content, the quality of the, the kids' research and their work. Okay, after the clapping, Mr. Shanner coughed and said, Now for the first place project. We felt the winning project was a fine example of real science. It was organized, clear, and complete. I knew we wouldn't get first place. I started reciting the sevens times tables in my head just to keep myself from crying. But right at seven times four, Kevin started pushing me out from behind our table. Why was he pushing? Go, he said. We won. We what? We won. I screamed and jumped up and down. I couldn't believe it. Kevin and I each got a certificate and a blue ribbon that had first place science fair stamped on it in gold letters. Miss Babbitt hugged us. Then she whispered in my ear, I knew you could make it work. My mom and dad came up and hugged us. So did Kevin's mom. Thanks for coming, I heard Kevin say to her. I wouldn't have missed it for anything. I'm just sorry I was late, she said. Then his mom pulled a camera out of her purse. Say cheeseburger, she told Kevin and me. Aw, mom, come on, Kevin said, but he smiled. Remember what I said at the beginning where I, where I told you that we would feel like we got to know the characters? This author does a great job making you feel like you're at the science fair with Beanie and Kevin. And you really get to know what kind of person Beanie is and what kind of a person Kevin is. Uh, just putting together such a high quality science fair project tells you a little something about them. Take a look at these think critically questions. Can you answer these? What do you think Beanie will do the next time she enters a science fair? Do you think she's going to get a bunch of streamers and put on music and hand out candy? Or do you think she's going to concentrate on the research and make sure that she has high quality content in her project. Why are Carol, Anne, and Stacy's crystals so small? What went wrong? Did you think that Beanie and Kevin would win first place? Why or why not? How can you tell that the author thinks the content of a science experiment is more important than the decorations? See if you can answer this one on paper. What do you think Beanie learned from doing the science experiment or from participating in the science fair? What do you think she got out of that experience? Give examples from the story to support your answer.